Okay, so hello everybody. My name is Marcel Urban. I'm from the Department for Earth Observation at the Friedrich Schiller University Jena. Um, and today's practical is about calculating uh, a surface moisture index from Sentinel-1 time series and comparing it to actual in-situ soil moisture measurements using R. As already mentioned in the today's tutorial, we are utilizing a Sentinel-1 time series. So radar data uh, with C-band, so the wavelength is approximately 5 centimeters. And we are using the VV polarization as the VV polarization is sensitive um, to surface moisture changes. So, and we're using a time series, um, and in this specific case, we have an acquisition of a Sentinel-1 scene every 12 days. So, when we um, looked right now into our R um, program, um, we see that at first we need to install and, and load some uh, packages we need to um, yeah, import to the program uh, for our calculations. And these packages are mainly um, used for, for raster handling and also plotting of data. So at the beginning of our R script we need to um, install or if they're already installed load some packages. Uh, which were then used for the um, handling of our raster data, so basically importing and reading the raster data, um, as well as for plotting our data then in the end. And here we are using um, a package called Pacman, and Pacman is uh, very useful if you have um, a lot of libraries you want to you want to uh, load at the beginning of your of your script, which is in this case here this list of of packages we want to load. And so we import uh, the library Pacman first, and then with the command pload, um, we're importing all of the um, libraries. So in the next step, um, the next part of the script is uh, basically um, doing the import of the raster data. So as I said, we are using Sentinel-1 um, time series in VV polarization with a temporal resolution of 12 days. And in the first step, we are setting um, a, a folder where the data is stored um, with the command set vd, wd. Um, and then we know the name of the file, which is uh, this one here. Um, and the data is actually based um, uh, from a small nature reserve in Southern Africa. Um, and we are importing the file with this comment, with the comment brick. And um, actually, this is an NV file. So an NV file is um, containing um, the raster information, but also um, the band name information. And this is very important for the next steps because we want to uh, import um, information from the inv individual band names because they are named after the date of acquisition. So as it is um, satellite data, we also need to handle no data values because there are some gaps in the data. Um, in this specific case, we don't have clouds because it's raster data, so the cloud, uh, the, the radar signal uh, penetrates the clouds. Um, so, um, but we also have um, other artifacts. We might also have other artifacts in the data, um, and we know that this value of the artifacts or of the no data values are uh, minus ninety nine. So we define that for the for the R script here as NA, which is then uh, known from R to be the no data value. The um, Sentinel one data are actually in logarithmic um, decibel values, and uh, with a logarithmic scale, it's uh, difficult to um, make some calculations to apply some equations um, on the data. So we want to transfer that uh, at the beginning uh, of the script here to to linear values in order to make the right calculation with the data. As it is now imported and um, it is a here you see it is a file, um, a raster brick file, for example, um, and contains some different uh, metadata information like the the amount of layer and the extent of the layer. Um, we want now um, the um, save this data set here, the raster brick, as a um, data frame because it's more easy to handle in R to have uh, an own data format of the data. We do it by this comment, so right now we have a new variable which is called df data frame. 
And as I said before, we, we are using an env file here. So um, what we want to extract right now is the band names from the data frame. Uh, because I said in the band names um, we have the uh, information of the, of the date of acquisition of the satellite image included. So we're doing it here and then I can open this new variable, the band names, and we see a list actually. Um, and this would be the last entry in the list. This is the band name from the env file and it contains actually here the information on the acquisition date. So this would be the um, 4th of September 2021. And behind that, behind the date um, stamp, we have some information on the polarization here and some information on the processing steps which have been done prior to this analysis here. So what we want to do next is we want to extract uh, this part here of the names because we want to get uh, only the um, date of acquisition and we're doing with this for loop here. So that means we have a new variable right now which is called date. And if I open that, you see that the list have shortened and the each entry in the, in the list have changed and we only have the date information. But these are only numbers right now, but we know that is the date. But what we want to do is we want to transfer this number right now to a date format, which is recognizable by R. So in this we're doing with this um, command uh, POSIXCT, where we define how this data frame, uh, how this, um, where we define how this date looks like. So we have this information here that it starts with the year, then the month, and then the day. So if we define it and starting this in the for loop, we're getting actually a new variable right now which called date sent in a one, date as one. And if I open that, we see that the date format has changed and this is right now a date which is recognizable for the R script. And this is very important when it comes to plotting afterwards. So after importing the data, we want to actually retrieve the um, surface moisture information from the Sentinel-1 time series and we are doing this with the change detection approach and the reference to this approach uh, you can find in the additional information. So first of all, we need to um, calculate uh, percentiles. So we are using not the minimum and the maximum, we are using the percentile 5 of the data and the per percentile 95. And we are defining first function to calculate these percentiles. And with these functions, we can define the data which will be in imported to calculate the percentile. We say that the no data information we defined a prior will be not taken into account. And we can define which percentile we want to calculate. So this would be the percentile 5 and this would be percentile 95. In the next step, we're using this function for the calculation actually to define new two new variables, the perg 5 and the perg 95, which is basically then executed with a command calc the file we imported and the function we defined. We are using the percentiles 5 and 9 because we are searching for a wet and a dry reference. And this is important for the change detection approach. So, because we assume that a radar backscatter which is low comes from a surface which is dry and the backscatter with high intensity comes from a surface which is wet. So that means we are having a dry and a wet reference because we are searching for the lowest backscatter and the highest backscatter in our time series. And with this, we can compute a range between these wet and dry conditions. And afterwards, we are using this equation for each pixel where we take the actual value of the time step minus the dry reference divided by the range of the wet and the dry reference multiplied by 100 to retrieve actually percentage 
surface moisture information. So actually we'll be getting a data set right now which is scaled between 0 and 100%. And as there might be outlier in the data which goes above 100% or below 0 in the data due to artifacts in the data, which might be very rare, um, we then eliminating this information, so values above 100 and values below 0 um, in the data file here, in the new variable um, soil moisture. So and this would complete um, the next step, calculation of the surface moisture. And I execute the code with one click. So as I said in the beginning, we want to compare our surface moisture derived from our satellite data to real in situ measurements from a um, soil moisture network which was installed in March 2020 at the Benfontaine Nature Reserve. The soil moisture probes there measure the soil moisture every half an hour in a depth of 6 centimeters. And this is the data set we want to compare to our satellite information. So what we first need to do is we create a new variable which is called data and we read a text file because the data which comes from the, from the um, in situ soil moisture probes are, is a txt file and we import this data with this command. And as we know how the, this table is structured, we will give each column a name. And the column names are basically, it starts with a date, then we have an ID of the first probe, of the first sensor. We have different measurements, the temperature, the soil moisture, and the battery uh, voltage for each of these sensors. And we have eight sensors in total at each side. As we know how the table is structured, um, we define the names of each of the columns uh, for for the future analysis of it. So we know that the first column is actually the date. The second column is the ID of the sensor. And our soil moisture network there consists of eight sensors. And they are all connected in one data logger. And these eight sensors are in each um, direction on, um, on 10 meter cables. So that means we have a 20 meter diameter of our soil moisture equipment there measuring the soil moisture at each of this uh, direction. Okay, in the next step, we want to prepare the table we imported um, for the future analysis. So, because we don't need information on actually the ID of the sensor or the battery voltage, which is included in the table, um, we actually create a new table which only has the important information in it. So um, the first thing what we do is we extract the date from the first column into a new variable, which actually called data date, and it looks like this. You see actually the date and the time. And as I said, um, the so much information is measured every half an hour. In the next step, we select the soil moisture from the data file. And here we can select that with this string, which called SM. So each column, which starts with SM, soil moisture, will be selected and put into a new variable. And these are right now... Um, eight sensors, so the new variable consists of these eight columns right now. And then the next step, we want to combine the soil moisture information and the date to have a new table. And this is done with the command cbind. You see that? We have a new variable right now, which is called data soil moisture. And we see that we have now a table which has the date at the beginning and then all the eight probes after the date. And we also want to do it for the temperature. 
So we make the same um, approach. So we select all the columns which start with temp, creating a new variable. But we don't want to have the temperature of all the eight sensors. We want to create a mean out of it. So we actually um, calculating with the command row means um, the mean temperature of this moisture network there. And um, we can then see that it's only one value left. So that would basically the temperature at the sensor, so that means in six centimeter depth, um, the temperature of the soil um, for each half an hour. So, and similar to the um, conversion of the date, which we have done for the Sentinel-1 time series at the first part, with the POSIXCT command, we do it also for the date included in our new tables. And um, this would be done with this command. So we're creating first a new variable, which is called D underscore T, converting the dates to a R known format, and then overwriting the date column at each of the new um, variables for the soil moisture and for the temperature. So right now we have created a data frame for our satellite information and converted it to surface moisture information. And we created a table which consists of in situ, so ground, soil moisture measurements and temperature. So, and what we want to do right now, we want to plot them. First, we have a look at the soil moisture information, which have been measured by the uh, in-situ soil moisture network. So there we want to prepare the plot right now, and um, we define the limits of our plot. So basically the start and the end of, of our, of our x-axis, where the date is shown. So when we doing this with a new variable, which is called limbs. So then it comes to plotting the data in the next section. And uh, first of all, we define um, the name of the file we want to export. So we want to export the plot as, a, as an image. So we can do it as a PNG in this case here, or as JPEG, or as TIFF. Um, so we define it as this file name here, Soil Moist Temp Ben Fontaine PNG. It will be saved to the folder where our data is. We set initially. The next step would be we define a start time of the plot, which is actually the first entry of our variable limits. So it will be the 1st of March 2020. And we of course uh, define an end time, which is the second entry, which would be the 1st of December 2021. There's a parameter which can be set how the dimension of the plot should be. And then we have the plotting command itself. And here in the plot command, we define what should be on the x-axis, which is the column date, and what should be on the y-axis, which is the column temperature. We can define also a, a main title of the plot and several other information. For example, what is the what is the uh, caption for the x-axis and what is the limits for the y-axis. So there are several things we can do. So and now we plot the data. And we see at first we plot only the temperature. And as I said, there are eight sensors measuring soil moisture information. We add each of the sensor by a separate line. And they are listed here separately, so it's more easy for you in the end to handle um, changing of color, changing of line type, changing of line width. So, um, and you see right now, so we added all the eight um, sensor informations here. And um, right now, we creating a background grid to make it better readable between these um, access entries. 
So, and we also want to add a secondary axis right now because we have soil temperature and soil moisture. So on the second axis to the right would be the soil temperature in Celsius, degrees Celsius, and on the left axis, on the first axis, would be the soil moisture in volumetric percent. And that we know what line is what, we add a legend to the plot where we see now that the black dashed line is the soil temperature and the colored line are each um, of them um, showing in uh, the information of a different probe, of a different sensor. So now our x-axis is missing, where we see the dates, and um, so as we defined which is the start date and the end date, um, we can label them here very easily um, with text and we see that, um, actually, if I make it a little bit bigger, uh, it's updating so that we see that here starts uh, with the March of 2020 and end on the December 2021. Okay, so within the next step, um, we want to plot our in situ information here, in situ soil moisture information, to our satellite derived surface moisture to compare what is the fit between the satellite signal and the actual measurements from the ground. So what we need to do first is we need to combine these two sources, which are pretty different because the satellite um, made, made an observation every 12 days and the in situ measurements are taking place every half an hour. So what we in the first sight need to do is to um, actually calculate a, a daily mean of the in situ soil moisture information. And in, in the same step, we're also combining all the eight probes to one value. And what we all need to do is to apply, to make it more comparable, to apply the change detection approach to the in situ soil moisture information. And this will be done with this formula here. Um, and we create each time a new data frame which will be then utilized for the plotting of the data. So that means we're making calculations, we're copying this to a new data frame and we're adding the date because the date is very important for the plotting in the end because we always need to know um, at which date this value is coming from and if it's a Sentinel-1 derived surface moisture index or if it's an in situ measurement. In the next step, we actually transpose our satellite data because um, the satellite data, when we imported it as a data frame, it is not a table where each column shows the time series of the pixel. In this case, each row is showing the time series of the pixel. So that means in here we have a raster data set which has a dimension of 3 by 3 pixel. So that means we would have 9 rows and columns would be actually the dates. So what we need to do, we need to bring it also to the same dimension we have in the same order we have for the in-situ measurements. So that means we need to transpose this, this table of the satellite-derived surface moisture by this command here, T, which means transpose, so that we have our pixel information in each column and the dates in the row. As I said that we have 3x3 three three pixel in the raster file, we want to calculate the mean of these 9 pixels. And we're doing this with um, this function here, which is, actually calling, uh, uh, which is actually calculating the median from these 9 pixels. Um, and we also want to have the standard deviation, which will be used for the uncertainty in the plot. So yeah, we're calculating the median of the 9 pixels and we're calculating the standard deviation of the 9 pixels. Um, and the median will be shown as a point or rectangle then in the plot and the standard deviation as error bar. And in the end, we're saving everything in a data frame. As we are using the ggplot function, 
uh, for plotting our data and ggplot is very uh, useful and is widely used for plotting when working with R scripts, um, we first need to melt the tables which actually put all the columns on top of each other. So in the next step, we actually execute the ggplot command, which will then plot the in situ soil moisture information on top of um, the surface moisture information derived from the Sentinel-1 time series. So, and ggplot is um, developed consecutively, so you can change different parameters in the plot in each of these lines, so basically the title, the, uh, the axis title, the axis uh, length, the, the, the plot size, and if you want to integrate a line or a point or this error margin, and this is all included here in the next comments. Um, and actually it is plotted in the end, so we execute all of these comments here. And in the end we execute the P and we see actually here that this plot shows the in situ surf, uh, soil moisture in percent in blue and the sentinel derived surface moisture information so the surface moisture index every 12 days and we see actually it's a very nice fit even um, or especially for the dry out phases here after precipitation events so the precipitation events can be seen as peaks here in the data and the satellite signal actually pretty much react on that. And also in the dry out phase we have a very nice transition of the information. And in the last comment we can plot, uh, we can save this plot to a file in our um, folder. Okay, so this is the end of the tutorial. Um, so what we learned today is to convert Sentinel-1 VV polarized time series into surface moisture information and compare it to in situ information, actually ground measurement and plotting them and saving these plots to a specific file.